Aces are back with some more Z790 motherboards. There's seven, I think, refreshes coming out today. And I have the Z790 Pro Wi-Fi to show you. This will take the number one spot from the Asus Tough Z790 Plus that I previously looked at, so it will be a step above. There are a few new features as well, if we just lay this flat that you can see. We have got the Q antenna, which I'm quite keen to check out. Some AI overclocking options on there as well. Every aspect of what we do seems to have some kind of AI attached to it now, and now it's on motherboards. Uh, so let's get this thing out of the box and have a look. So first of all, we've got our Wi-Fi antennas in here. This will have the little Q connectors that I mentioned on. It's more of a push pin design than like a threaded one like you'd see on traditional motherboards, so it seems to be a lot easier. It's also a magnetic one as well, so you can put it on the back of your case and then you can angle it to whatever direction you want. And we've got a couple of SAS cables, one of which is right angled. There's some M.2 pads for single sided ones, you've got three there. A, it's another standoff and screw for an M.2. Then just some documentation on the right hand side, quick start guide. Um, the certificate reliability that you get with the Tough products, some stickers. Last but not least, a driver disc. I really thought we were going to see the back of these, but they're still including them. Ta da! So, first impressions very stealthy and sleek. Lots of mattness and brushed metal going on. Uh, seems like there's a little bit less yellow and orange as well, a bit there on the IO shield, but generally speaking, it seems like a little bit less of the orange which i think can be a good thing especially if you're going for a bit of a theme you don't want it standing out now in comparison to the last board i'm going to just put this to the side so you can do a little side by side comparison not too much of a fan of that bit to be perfectly honest and then this bit's like a rubberized bit which is very strange to see on another board so before we go around the edges of the board let's just look at the vrm this is a 16 plus 1 dr moss phase power of course the lga 1700 socket so 12 13th and 14th gen support a little bit of a thing if you're going to use an older board with a 14th gen processor you will need to bias update first so make sure you do that before you sell your old one for example because otherwise you're going to be stuck so let's go around the board on the top left we've got two 8 pin eps connectors not shield or anything on this one just standard ones we've got our first couple of fan headers we've got the cpu fan and then the aio pump Going down a bit, we've got the first of our RGB connectors. There's a standard 12 volt on the left and then a, an addressable five volt on the right. The little patch of yellow as well. On the other side, there are some RGB LEDs that you can configure in the armory crate. 24 pin, and we've got USB type C header. This is USB 3.2 gen two, so up to 20 gigabits per second. Then we've got the USB three type A connector below that as well. Then one of my favorite features on the motherboards, which is the quick release latch. Very handy thing to have, especially if we're gonna do a lot of benchmarking. There's two SATA ports on the right angle. There are a couple more that come out straight from the board at the bottom, but just four on this one. I'll reduce the numbers down as we did generally see six, um, but M.2 storage is so cheap now, um, that's why. We've got the front panel stuff to the bottom right of the board, then there's an additional three fan headers. There's also one up by the socket as well, so that gives you a total of seven on this board. A couple of USB 2 headers are great for anything that needs control, for like an LCD screen on an AIO, for example, they generally use USB 2. Then we've got another two five volt addressable headers, so you've got a total of three on this board. There's a Thunderbolt header just above those, so if anyone's wondering about that. Then we've got front panel audio on the bottom left. So going back up to our DIMM slots, this supports AEMP2 memory modules and will take up to 192 gigabytes of DDR5 at 7,800 megatransfers per second. That's on XMP. Can, of course, go higher if you want to do it manually. Onto the storage and PCIe slots. Let's do the PCIe slots first. The first one's a PCIe X16 slot. This will support Gen 5 graphics card when they're available. We've got another additional 16, which will run at four times mode, and then the same with the bottom one as well. There's also a couple of PCIe 3 slots as well, so great for anything like capture cards. So the first slot will take up to 110 mil drive. This is Gen 4 as well. There's no Gen 5 storage for this motherboard. We've got a thermal pad on the back to aid with heat dissipation. And those latches have also got the little quick releases as well, which are really handy to have. Further down, there's an additional 80 mil drive, again, Gen 4. Then under the cover, we've got an additional support for 110 mil and another 80. Again, Gen 4 with quick release latches. So a total of four M.2 slots on this board, 210 and 280 mil, all at Gen 4. So let's look at the rear I.O. First of all, we've got an HDMI display port, so great if you need to do any troubleshooting. Then we've got four blue USB ports. These are five gigabits per second. There's a type C, which is at 10 gigabits per second. So USB 3.2 Gen 2. The green ports, these are USB type A 3.2 Gen 2. So 10 gigabits per second. We've got a two and a half gig ethernet. Then we've got a 20 gigabyte USB type C to the right hand side. So that's USB 3.2 Gen 2x2. A Wi-Fi 6E antenna points and then also some basic audio. I've got the antenna just to try the quick connects out. Let's see how easy they are. Oh, very easy. Done. A lot faster than using threads, that's for sure. 
So that was a look at the Asus Tough Z790 Pro Wi-Fi. Let me know what you think about it in the comments box below. Pricing wise, I've managed to find a listing online at the moment, which is a little bit strange considering this is under NDA. That is for $365.99. So more certainly of the premium price for a tough board, but you do have a lot of functionality there that you would generally see on the higher end boards anyway. No Gen 5 storage, which I think is a little bit of a shame. I do like the quick connects though for the aerial, that's pretty cool. Very easy to use as well. Let me know what you think about the board in the comments box below. Also, if you've got any more questions, then do ask them there and I'll get back to you. I'll add the links in the description box if you want to pick one up. Get subscribed and ding the bell so you don't miss the build. It's going to be coming up with this board very soon. Looking forward to doing that. Thank you all for watching. Thank you to Asus for sending this out for me to look at. And I'll see you all in the next one.